The longest tank kill record set by the British Challenger tank during the Gulf War in 1991 is still standing, despite new wars and new technologies. The longest tank-to-tank -tank kill was fired from three miles away. Want to know more? Hey guys, welcome to our channel Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks, from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced battle tanks at present. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's begin! One thing that is undeniably British is a love of a good underdog story, and British military history is full of examples of this. The Harrier in the Falkland Islands, the Swordfish bomber attacked Taranto Harbor, and the evacuation of Dunkirk to name a few. On the eve of the ground war to liberate Kuwait and destroy Iraq's mighty army in 1991, one underdog was undoubtedly the British Challenger tank. The FV-4034 Challenger 1 is a British main battle tank, or MBT, that served in the British Army from 1983 to 2001 before being replaced by the Challenger 2. After extensive modifications, it is now used as the Royal Jordanian Army's main battle tank. The Jordanian military's variants were to be upgraded with the unmanned Falcon turret. The former Military Vehicles and Engineering Establishment, or MV, near Chobam in Surrey, developed the Challenger in response to an Iranian order for an improved version of the Chieftain line of tanks in service around the world. These were the FV-4031, FV-4032 Shear Lion 1, and 4033 Shear 2 Chieftain MK-5P. Following the demise of the UK MBT-80 project and the fall of the Shah of Iran, the British Army became the customer, and the tank was further developed by MV to meet Western European requirements. The tank was briefly known as Chevio, the name of a hill range, before being renamed Challenger, a name borrowed from the World War II cruiser MK-8 Challenger tank. The Challenger 1's most advanced feature was its Chobam armor, which provided protection far superior to any monolithic rolled homogeneous armor or RHA, the then standard of Western tank armor material. Other designs, including the American M1 Abrams, later adopted this armor. Furthermore, the hydro pneumatic suspension provided exceptional cross-country performance thanks to its long suspension arm travel and controlled bump and rebound behavior. The Royal Ordnance Factories built the Challenger ROF. The British Army deployed the Challenger 1 in 1983 and production ended in 1990 at a cost of around £2 million per vehicle. Vickers Defense Systems purchased ROF Leeds and the Challenger production line in 1986, later Alvis Vickers. Jordan began by purchasing 274 Challenger 1 tanks. Another 288 surpluses of Challenger 1s were supplied to Jordan over a three-year period under an agreement signed in March 1999, allowing the Jordanian Centurion fleet, known locally as Tariq, to be replaced. The Ministry of Defense was eager to demonstrate the Challenger 1's capabilities at the Canadian Army Trophy Competition, CAT 87, which was held in Grafenvor, West Germany, in June 1987. The Second Royal Tank Regiment had performed best in preliminary competitions, despite the fact that its Challengers were not equipped with thermal observation and gunnery sight, or TOGS, putting them at a disadvantage. The Royal Hussars had a squadron equipped with TOGS but they had been training with chieftains at Batis in Canada instead of with Challenger and TOGS for CAT 87. 22 new Challengers with TOGS were diverted from the production line specifically for the competition, resulting in teething issues. The Hussars earned some respectable results during the competition, but their three platoons finished last in the league table. I do not believe that the performance of tanks in the artificial circumstances of a competition, such as the recent Canadian Army Trophy, is a proper indication of their capability in war," said Ian Stewart, Minister of State for the Armed Forces, in a statement to the House of Commons on 14 July. Later, a requirement for a new MBT was issued. Proposals for the new specification included an improved Vickers Challenger, an American M1 Abrams, a French Leclerc, and a German Leopard II. Vickers Defense Systems design, dubbed Challenger II, was eventually chosen. Based on the same basic MV-designed hull as its predecessor, this tank features a new turret based on the Vickers Private Venture MK7 design and improved Chobam armor. British Army Challenger 1 withdrawals began in 1998 and it was completely replaced by Challenger 2 by 2001. A Challenger Marksman SPOG version with the Marksman turret was also available. There were serious concerns about the vehicle's dependability. 
Furthermore, there were serious concerns about how a tank designed for temperate climates would fare in desert warfare. Because of faults and a lack of spares, only 22% of Challenger 1s were operational prior to the start of the Gulf War deployment. The 4th Armored Brigade was added to the force on November 22, 1990, under the umbrella of the 1st British Armored Division. The new brigade consisted of a single Challenger regiment, the 14th 20th King's Hussars, which was equipped with 43 Challenger 1 tanks and was reinforced by a squadron of the lifeguards. They were outfitted with the Mark II tank, which had been upgraded by armoring the storage bins for the 120mm charges, as well as the additional armor found on the Mark III tanks. During Operation Desert Shield, it was decided that the US-7 Corps would command the 1st British Armored Division. This corps would form the Coalition Forces Armored Fist, tasked with destroying the majority of the Iraqi forces. The forces of the 7 Corps crossed the Saudi border into Iraq and then into Kuwait. The 1st British Armored Division was the easternmost unit in 7 Corps sector with its Challenger tanks leading the charge. In a series of battles and engagements, the division advanced nearly 350 kilometers in 97 hours, destroying the Iraqi 46th Mechanized Brigade, 52nd Armored Brigade, and elements of at least three infantry divisions belonging to the Iraqi 7th Corps. They captured or destroyed approximately 300 people. Iraqi tanks and a large number of armored personnel carriers, trucks, and reconnaissance vehicles, among other things. The main threat to the Challenger was the Iraqi Republican Guard's T-72M tanks. Each British tank was equipped with 12 L26A1 Jericho depleted uranium shells designed specifically for use against T-72Ms, but none were encountered during the coalition's ground campaign because the division had been withdrawn beforehand. In combat, the Challenger's global positioning system and thermal observation and gunnery system proved crucial, allowing attacks to be launched at night in low visibility and through smoke screens. In total, British Challengers destroyed approximately 300 Iraqi tanks without losing a single battle. The commander of the 7th Armored Brigade, Patrick Cordingly, later stated, Challenger is a tank built for combat, not competitions. On February 26, 1991, a Challenger killed an Iraqi tank at a distance of 4,100 meters with an armor-piercing fin-stabilized, discarding Sabot, round fired by Callsign 11B. The CO of the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards tank, Lieutenant Corporal Michael Smith, the gunner, lays the target and watched in disbelief as the targeting ellipse shifted onto the Hesh scale due to the target's extreme distance. I released the autoplay computer system and manually adjusted the ellipse by fine laying onto the target before firing. My only regret was not being able to repeat the shoot to prove to any doubters that it was no fluke, but a carefully sighted shot, M. Smith stated. The British Army used challengers in Bosnia and Herzegovina, as well as in NATO-led Operation Joint Guardian in Kosovo. And that's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comments space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.